when we multiply vectors, there's two different ways we can do it. This first, the first way is the scalar product, or dot product. The scalar product tells you how much the vectors are parallel to each other, or how much one vector is in the direction of the other. We can visualize this with the projection of one vector onto another. So if we have a vector a here, a, and then another vector b here, then we can draw the projection of a onto b to kind of show what component of A is in the direction of B. So this is the component of A that is in the direction of B. I don't know if you can write that, but that's to show that. So if you consider this a right triangle, and there's some angle between the two, then what we can say is that this component vector is the magnitude of A cosine theta. And so what you are finding is you're multiplying with the dot product, or the scalar product, either name, you're multiplying the amount that is in line with, it, with the other vector. So a dot, it's not regular multiplication, big dot there, b is equal to the component of a times cosine theta. This quantity is the amount of a that is in the direction of b times b, the magnitude of b. So the magnitude of b. More often it's written a, b, cosine, theta. You can also think of this as being the projection the other way. And so the amount that b is in the direction of a. Right? So B has some component that's in the direction of A. And so this would be B cosine theta. And so you can think of this as the amount of A that's in the direction of B times B or the amount of b that's in the direction of a times a. It doesn't matter either way, because you're just multiplying quantities. You can switch up the order. And so you can think about it either way. But you're just projecting one vector onto the other. And what you're really doing is you're multiplying the amounts that they are in the same direction of each other. So you're multiplying the aligned components. So we could perform the scalar product in component form, using components of a vector. So a dot b is equal to a x. I could write x hat. I'm going to write i hat just to give you some variation. x hat, y hat, k hat, uh, whoops, and z hat is sometimes used, and uh, i hat, j hat, k hat, yeah, i hat, j hat, k hat is sometimes used as well. They're synonymous. So I'm going to go with i, j, k this time. So a, x, i hat plus a, y, j hat plus a, z, K hat dot BX I hat 
plus b y j hat plus b z k hat. So we multiply this out. And we get a x b x i hat i hat plus a x b y i hat j hat plus a x b z i hat k hat plus a y b x uh, uh, j hat j hat i hat plus a y b y j hat j hat plus a y b z j hat k hat one last line to go plus a z b x k hat i hat plus a z b y k hat j hat plus a z b z k hat k hat okay that's a lot yeah but a lot of stuff cancels because the orthogonal components equal zero. For example, i, j, i hat times j hat. This is a dot product, and these are each unit vectors. So they're dot products in themselves. So this would be 1, because the unit vector is magnitude 1, times 1, times cosine of the angle between them. And the angle between two orthogonal vectors is 90 degrees. And the cosine of 90 degrees is 0. So every place we have two unlike unit vectors being dot producted together, we know it's 0. So that term 0, that term 0, that term 0, that term 0, that one, and that one. That knocked out a bunch. So what do we do with the i, I hat, i hat times i hat, j hat times j hat, and k hat times k hat? What is that? Well, for example, i hat times dot product, right? i hat, that's equal to 1 times 1 times cosine of the angle between them. What's the angle between two vectors that are pointing in the same direction? That's 0. And the cosine of 0 is 1. So all of these like hat terms are 1. 1. 1. So what are we left with? Now we can just clean it up and report what we're left with. So the dot product of A and B is equal to AX BX plus AY BY plus AZ BZ. Notice the result of a scalar or dot product is a scalar, hence the name. All right, so the other type of multiplication that we can do between vectors is called a vector product. So we have a scalar product and a vector product. There are other names, just go by the symbols that we use to indicate the type of multiplication. So the other name for this one is the cross product. So cross product So if the scalar product tells you how much the vectors are in line with each other, then the cross product or the vector product tells you how orthogonal they are to each other. So visually, the vector product of A cross B being equal to C, A cross B equals C, 
we can express it like this. So you have some vector a, and you have some vector b, and the resulting vector, if this is a, and this is b, you're going to take your right hand and you're going to curl your fingers from A to B, and your thumb sticking out gives the direction of C. So C is going to be in this direction. It's a little odd, but that's called the right hand rule. So while the order of multiplication did not matter for the scalar product, it does matter for the vector product. This means that A cross B does not equal b cross a. The magnitudes are the same, but the direction of the result will be different. So you can verify this with your right hand. If we were to take b cross a, you would be taking your right hand and sweeping it through this way, and so my thumb would be sticking out that way. And that would be the resulting vector for b cross a. So it's opposite direction but same magnitude. The vector product is aptly named also because it results in a vector. So just like scalar multiplication, we can perform vector multiplication using components. This one is a little bit more complex though. So if we have A cross B, what we do is we set this up. This is called taking the determinant of a matrix, if you're familiar with that language. So we would do our i, j, k on the top row. I'm going to have three rows. And here we have a, x, a, y, a, z. And here we have the b row, b, x, b, y, b, z. That's how you set it up. And then what you can do is you can picture blocking out this row and this column, and you're going to do this. So you're going to have a y, this term, multiplied by b z. And then we subtract by times az. And that is going to be your i hat magnitude. Then we move over and we block out this column, this row, and you do the same kind of a thing. So then we have plus AX times BZ minus BX times AZ. And that's our J hat bit. And then the last one, you can guess the formula here. We're still going to block out the top row, but we're going to block out this last column here do this. Hopefully this is lining up fine. So it's an upside down ribbon here. So we do AX times BY minus BX times AY. And that is our K hat. So uh, you might find it easier to memorize this. I certainly do not. I find it much easier to memorize the procedure after setting this up. But some students find that it's easier to just memorize this finished pink mess over here. Um, but if you want to look up other methods for maybe thinking about this procedure to find the one that works best for you, this is called taking the determinant of the matrix or finding a cross product of two vectors. And so you can see people have many different ways of, uh, of kind of thinking about that procedure of arriving at what we have in the pink over here. 
right? 